Hey PsychUers, we all know about the need to do more to make science interesting and accessible to the public, but few people are actually doing something about it. That's why I was so excited to be able to travel to Austin, Texas this month to speak at Astronomy on Tap. It's literally space science, but in a pub. How awesome is that? I also got to swap science communication notes with Joe Hansen from PBS Digital's It's Okay To Be Smart. Check out some of his videos right here. They're awesome. Astronomy on Tap is hands down the closest thing you're gonna to get to some cool shit in space science without actually having to go through Neil deGrasse Tyson's trash. It runs in several cities. The one that I was at in Austin, Texas is run by the awesome Dr. Jeff Silverman and Dr. Rachel Livemore of UT Austin. But there's also awesome Astronomy on Tap events happening here in New York City and in a ton of other cities. Please enjoy this talk in a pub about science. I grew up on a small island off the coast of California called Australia. It's down there. <laughs> and the cool thing about living in Australia is that like, it really, really starts you for a career in science because as soon as you step out the front door, everything in nature is trying to kill you. So you really need a deep understanding of the scientific and like the natural world in order to survive. So growing up in Australia was awesome. Um, and I grew up like absolutely loving science. And I went on to study neuroscience. And I think that not only do I love science, but I think we all love science. Like a lot of people have like posters of Chris Hemsworth's abs up on our walls. But like I have this quote from Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's equally sexy. If you're scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you. And that understanding empowers you. And I think like we all get that. Like we know like science is just understanding stuff and like that's cool. And if you know that, then you can like do stuff. So I think I thought that everyone felt the same way about science that I did, but au contraire, when I was studying science, I realized that there are some people out there that like totally reject science and argue against it and it drives me absolutely crazy. And I couldn't help myself. I was like arguing with these guys all the time, but it doesn't matter how often you argue with them. It's kind of like this. I know some of you on Facebook sound like you've had the same experience. No matter how good you are at chess, <laughs> I'm guessing you can all read that. So I've had this experience like really recently at South by Southwest. I was interviewed by a group called InfoWars who are like really pro-Republican. Yeah, you know them. Uh, from science, I studied neuroscience and I was so angry at these people. I decided to study a master's degree in science communication. And I thought maybe if I can just like figure out how to communicate with these people, we can like, you know, bring science to the people that need it. Uh, but I studied science communication and I realized when I graduated two things. One, science communicators don't appreciate, uh, scientists don't appreciate science communicators as much as science communicators appreciate themselves. Themselves. And two, that means there's no jobs. So I think that when I was going through and I was working at PR and I'd come from a background in science communication, I realized there was three major differences in the way that scientists communicate and the way that PR people communicate. One is that in science, we kind of have this like assumed engagement, like come to my science class and sit down and I will give you the knowledge and you will pay attention and then you'll know stuff and pass the exam. Whereas in marketing, we assume no one gives a shit. So we spend a lot of time like getting really sexy models on our advertisements to try and get your attention in the hope that maybe we can sell you something. Thing. In science, we are really information based, like here's the knowledge, it's in a book, you can read the book, you can learn the knowledge. But in marketing, it's all like emotion based, like um, open happiness and like we're loving it. Like there's, so it's all about emotion. And in science, we assume that you're an empty vessel. So like your brain is empty, you don't know science, and I'm gonna tell you the science, and then you're gonna know the science, and your brain will be full. Whereas in marketing, we, under we assume that the audience has like hopes and dreams and aspirations of their very own, and if we can just understand you, we can target our message better to you. So I got really tired after like being in the world of marketing and PR and communications, realizing that scientists weren't communicating super well. I got really tired of seeing a lot of really slick commercials that look like this, and then having science communicators still kind of doing it like this. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching PsyQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.